Hi children, I welcome you all uh, for today's online class. Okay children, in today's online class, what we are going to learn? Okay, we are going to learn a new things which is very very important children. Chapter 2, Lines and Angles, Part 4 for grade 7th standard. So children, in the part 4 video, we are going to see the pair of lines. Okay, lines we have learned. We have uh, we are going to learn the pair of lines and its properties. Too. Okay, come, let us go for today's topic. Let us start a uh, today's topic with a small test. Today. Okay, now the question is indicate which pairs of angles are vertically opposite angles, linear pair of angles. So children. Before we answer this question, please make sure you have watched the part, uh, previous parts because in the previous parts, we have practiced and we have mentioned the uh, vertically opposite angles, linear pair of angles we have learned, okay? So before you answer, please make sure you have watched the previous parts, okay? The figure is is a line another line angle angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 angle 4 angle 5 children so we have five angles where we should find the vertically opposite angles uh, which angles are vertically opposite angles which angles are linearly pair angles children so write a test before we go for uh, today's topic uh, let us recall the previous parts okay and previously we have learnt about the something first uh, let us recall about angles okay what is actually angles children okay so let me explain or let us understand through one example about the angles here. So children, we have a ray here, okay? Let us call this ray as an initial ray, okay? Understand? It is a initial ray, okay? And you know, children, why it is a ray? Because it has a starting point, there is no end point, so it is called a ray, okay? Let me assume this as a initial ray i mean a starting ray okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to rotate this ray in the anti clockwise okay in the anti clockwise in the anti clockwise direction this direction shows and i'm going to rotate this uh, uh, ray in the anti clockwise rotation so after some rotation i'm going to stop here okay let me assume this as a terminal position okay final position terminal position or this is a terminal ray okay after so rotation i have stopped and let me assume this is as a terminal ray okay so children here you should understand one thing uh, the initial ray has traveled from its initial position to the terminal position okay it has uh, you know reached some place okay some distance yes or no from the initial position to the terminal position okay the distance the distance of the uh, ray from its initial position to terminal position is called a angle children it's called a angle okay so uh, this angle we will measure in by theta it should be represented as a theta the understand children what is angle now angle is nothing but distance between the initial ray and the terminal ray it's called a angle so how do we measure this by by the theta okay we will we will measure the theta to represent the angle now do you understand children this is, this is called a angle so if you rotate this uh, uh, ray in the clockwise you will get the negative angles if you rotate the uh, ray in the anti-clockwise we will get the 
positive angles children so depends on the measurement we will classify into different types of angles that about that we will learn in the next uh, part children okay so i believe you all understood what is the angle now so angle is the uh, distance between the initial ray and the terminal ray. okay so it is denoted by theta it is measured by degree okay it based on the measurement of the angle we will classify into different types of angles next types of angles as i told you uh, depends on the measurement of the angles we will classify into different types for example one is a acute angle another one is a right angle a right angle next third one is obtuse angle obtuse angle next right uh, straight angle straight angle and reflex angle and complete angle which is nothing but zero angle okay first let us see what is acute angle here okay if the measure of the if the measure of an angle is less than 90 degree is less than 90 degree okay less than 90 degree all the angles are, are called uh, acute angles children okay so if an angle measures exactly 90 degree if an angle measures exactly 90 degree that is called a right angle children okay next obtuse angle if an angle measures more than 90 degree and let, let us assume that angle angle measures more than 90 degree or less than 180 degree and that such angles are called uh, obtuse angle children and if uh, if an angle measures exactly 180 degree if an angle measures exactly 180 degree and such an angles are called supplementary angle or i mean a uh, straight line okay straight angle straight angle children okay so now we have learned what is the uh, acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, reflex angle. If an angle, uh, next is reflex angle. What is the reflex angle? Reflex. Okay. In the reflex angle, if an angle measures more than 180 degree, if an angle measure. Okay, let me assume that angle as a theta. If an angle measures more than uh, 180 degree or less than 360 degree okay it's called a reflex angle children it's very very easy children if ang if an angle measures exactly 360 degree its angle is called okay let me explain this with and figure if an angle measures exactly uh, 360 degree this angle is called complete angle okay children so these are the types of angles in the types of angles acute angle it measures less than 90 degree right angle it 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 measures equals to 90 degree obtuse angle it measures more than 90 degree and less than 180 degree or a straight angle it measures exactly 180 degree reflex angle it measures more than 180 degree less than 360 degree if the angle measures 360 degree uh, which is a complete angle children next complementary angle okay if an angle there are two angles such that okay, i will let us understand through an example there is an there are two angles here okay one is a 60 degree another another angle is 30 degree okay so let us take these two examples okay some of these two angles is 60 degree 
plus 30 degree okay so totally 90 degree okay if uh, sum of any two angles measures 90 degree then the two angles are called the complementary angle children so if it does not equal to 90 degree then you cannot say it is a complementary angles supplementary angles okay sum of any two angles for example there are two angles here uh, 80 degree and 120 degree okay the sum of two angles is uh, sorry uh, 60 let us assume cannot be right here 60 degree okay 120 degree plus 60 degree okay its sum is equals to 180 degree children okay if any two angles its sum equals to 180 degree then the two angles are called supplementary angles children next is adjacent angle okay in the supplementary angle or complementary angle if the uh, for example let us understand through this an example okay there are three angle 1 and angle 2 okay let me assume angle 1 the arms are uh, let us take a o a and o b and o c there are three arms here okay in the angle one what are the arms here o a are the arms and arms means okay uh, we have two arms like that here two arms here o a one arm o a is one arm and o b is another arm okay let let me take now what is the what is the vertex of this vertex of the angle one here vertex of the angle one is O. okay same like this uh, let me take uh, angle 2 here angle 2 what is the arms are angle 2 here o b and o c are the two arms here now what is the vertex of these two angles here what is the vertex of angle 2 here same o okay so from this what we should understand in the both angle angle 1 and angle 2 they both have the common vertex point o okay common vertex is o then in the both the angle the sides are common here i mean arms are common here ob is the arm in the angle 1 ob is the arm in angle 2 in the both angle ob is a common here so therefore in the in any of the two angles forms in the same vertex and with the common arm such angles are called adjacent angles children next vertically opposite angles okay now we have a two lines here for example uh, line 1 and line 2 okay the two line intersect at point o okay where the intersecting point is called the vertex here intersecting point is the vertex here so when uh, two lines cross each other it forms a four angles here angle 1 2 3 4 okay now if you see the vertex of the angle 3 is o okay the vertex of angle 1 is o okay since this angle 1 and angle 3 are opposite yes or no children you can see here the angle 1 and angle 3 are opposite to each other and it has uh, angle 3 and angle 1 the same vertex therefore the angle 3 and angle 1 are the vertically opposite angles or okay, same like that angle 2 and angle 4 are the vertically opposite angles why we need a vertically opposite angles here children the vertically op opposite angles are equal in measures if it is a 30 degree and this also will become the 30 degree okay that is the reason we say vertically opposite angles here vertically opposite angles are equal in measure okay so let, the next is linear pair of angles okay what is the linear pair of angles here in the linear pair of angles we form a we have a uh, 
angles okay o a b c okay you can see in the angle uh, let me assume this as angle 1 and angle 2 okay angle 1 and angle 2 so in the angle 1 in angle 1 okay vertex is o how many uh, rays are there so o a and o b are the rays in angle 2 children same vertex vertex point is same the rays are o b and o c okay from this you can understand and these two angles are the common vertex and common point common vertex and common rays here uh, i mean common arms here in the both angle angle 1 and angle 2 have, have the common vertex o common arm is ob today's topic now okay so after the complete after the completing this topic you will be able to learn what is a transversal line children okay by the end of this chapter you will be able to learn what is a transversal line now you will be able to understand about the concept of corresponding angles and alternate angles you will be able to understand about parallel lines when a parallel line when a transversal cut each other so then you will be able to understand about parallel lines when transversal cuts each other then you will be able to find the interior and exterior angles here what is the interior angle and what is the exterior angle? what our aim should be so with this aim let us see the today's topic first is intersecting and non intersecting line children so let us understand the word intersecting here okay we can understand in this way uh, which means meeting okay let us take a uh, two points here uh, two lines here line one okay and line two okay let us take a uh, two line two lines here line one and line two here okay line one and line two here the line 1 and line 2 somewhere this meets okay let me assume that point as a meeting point as a O okay so you can understand here so I will take another example here same line 1 and line 2 here okay so here in this case the two lines goes in different ways without uh, touching without meeting anywhere here okay so these two example you can understand the what is intersecting and what is non-intersecting children where in the first example line 1 line 2 meets at point okay its meeting point is called a intersecting point or meeting point here. okay these two lines are called intersecting line why it is called intersecting line because it meets some some point the point is O okay that O point is called a intersecting point or meeting point okay this point line 1 and line 2 meets here children okay this is two this is example for intersecting lines which are the lines are intersecting here the line 1 and line 2 are called the intersecting line now the same uh, line 1 and line 2 it does not uh, touch anywhere it goes in different way therefore we can say the line 1 is not is a non intersecting lines line 1 and line 2 are non intersecting lines children so two lines l and m intersect if they have a point in common this common point o is the point of intersection you can see the line 1 m called m line 2 called l it meets at point o okay the meeting point is called let me assume as a o then there is another line m called another line is called l the both line goes in a different way it does not meet anywhere so there is another line called l another line called m the both line meets uh, does not cross anywhere it, we can say it is a non intersecting line children so let us go for another topic which is transversal line what is a transversal line children so 
let us understand through one example with simple example children okay so i have a two lines here okay whatever it may be parallel line or, or let me take a two lines here okay children uh, we are going to understand now what is a transversal line okay so for that i take i have taken a two lines here so if you take another line make it to cross on the two lines okay at, at distinct points okay here the line l crosses and meets at the other two lines okay it may be p q okay p q are the two lines p q are the two lines or else the line l falls on the other two lines at point o t okay at distinct points the line falls the on the other two lines at distinct points o and t okay therefore where the line l which line is earlier this line okay this line this line is called the transversal line children this line is called a transversal line so the what is the transversal line here the transversal line will fall on the any uh, on the uh, will fall in the distinct points on the other two lines okay it may be the two uh, two lines or three lines okay you can say uh, here the line l falls on the other th three lines at a distinct point okay or we can take another line also the line l falls on the uh, on the other four lines at distinct points okay still the l is called the transversal line children okay what is the transversal line here a line that intersects uh, two or more lines at a distinct points called a transversal line for example line 1 line 2 okay here i have taken as a parallel lines okay let me take as a l okay now when a transversal cross or when a transversal falls on the other two lines it makes a four angles okay already we have learnt the how it forms of uh, angle here okay at this point and this point okay so when a transversal falls or intersects the line this line is called a l okay l and m n okay there are three lines here the line l is falls on the other lines m and n at point o t okay distinct points therefore the line l is called the transversal line children okay now when a transversal falls on the other two lines it makes a such angles like angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 angle 4 angle 5 angle 6 angle 7 angle 8 children so what you should understand if a transversal falls on the other two lines it makes a eight angles children do you understand children yes okay now we are going to learn about the properties you know the properties of these eight angles okay what about these eight angles what are the properties here okay it has formed eight angles here okay again i say what is the transversal line here so the transversal line which meets at distinct points on the other two lines okay here which line is meeting the line l is falls on the line m and line n at distinct points o at t okay and the transversal line makes the eight angles here angle one angle two angle three angle four five six seven eight okay so where we are going to learn first about the interior angles okay which are the angles are interior angles interior angles already we have learned that is a inside angles interior angles means inside angles okay then exterior angles here let us see what is the interior angle interior means inside i so i told you okay for what between this two line inside between the line m and m n or how many angles are there yes angle 3 and angle 4 we should represent this angle like this angle 3 and angle 4 angle 5 and angle 6 are inside yes or no children 
inside between the two lines M and N. Therefore, these angles are called interior angles. Children. Next is exterior angle. So, opposite to interior is exterior. Okay, interior means inside. Now, we should know what is the exterior, which means outside. Yes, therefore, angle 1, angle 2, and angle 8, angle 7, or the outside of the uh, line M and N. Therefore, it is called a exterior angle children okay exterior angle will be the outside of the lines two lines or parallel lines also let us see one by one corresponding angle. what is actually the corresponding angles which are the angles are corresponding angles okay there are some conditions here the corresponding angles corresponding angles have the different vertices first condition it, sh it should satisfy the different vertices and the corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal line second point so children you should understand corresponding angles have the different vertices and these angles are on the same side of a transversal line and are in the corresponding position which means above or below or left or right relative to the two lines do you understand children so this corresponding angles will satisfy this three conditions one is a different vertices and are on the same set of transversal line and or in the corresponding position which means above or below or left or right children okay such angles are called corresponding angles for example here you can see the transversal line okay let me mark a point here the line L is called a transversal line because it cuts the line at point O and T okay on the line M and N okay there are three, three lines area line N L M N okay the line L meets at point O at T it has a different vertices yes first condition is satisfied what are the different vertices here O and T okay O and T are the different vertices here then or in the same side of transversal line yes l is a transversal line is it the same side yes left hand side angle 1 and angle 5 are is the same side okay so therefore so it is in the corresponding position okay as i told you above yes this above and this five angle 5 is also above so therefore these two angles are corresponding angles children let us see another example the another example is this one okay let me give a name here l m and n so three angles here three lines here so the l line meets at point o and t okay it has a different vertices first condition is satisfied and is it falls on the same side of transversal line yes Hello, the same side of the transversal line children. So let me see. It is a same side of the transversal line. It is below to the uh, two lines children. So the next example is this one. Okay. Now how it is uh, called a uh, corresponding angles. Okay. Let me give a name here line okay let us assume uh, we can give a name okay line l m and n this time i will give a different vertices okay the line l and m meets at point uh, p and q okay so first condition was what is first condition here the transverse line should meet uh, the corresponding angle should have a different vertices yes this angle angle 2 has different vertices p and q different vertices is it in the same side of transversal line yes right side this side okay same side of the transversal line so second condition also satisfied and this is a above or below yes above both side are above so therefore the angle 2 and angle uh, what is alternate angles here? Here we are going to see in the two cases. One is a alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles. Okay. Uh, already I have told you what is interior here. Okay. Interior means inside. 
angles means interior angles inside angles okay what uh, what is alternate here that is what we are we are going to learn now alternate that is the condition alternate interior angles have the different vertices first first condition and or on the opposite sides of the transversal line okay this alternate angles alternate interior angles or the opposite sides of the transversal line and it has a different vertices next is it lie between the two lines do you understand children it the interior angles should lie between the two lines okay these three conditions should satisfy alternate interior angles for example there is a line line 2 okay there are two lines here let me call this as a m and n okay and we need a transversal line it is called a n so the l is called a transversal line because it meets at a distinct point uh, p and u okay children which angles can be called as a interior uh, interior angles okay i can mark this as a uh, 1 2 3 4 okay here yeah, these four angles are the inside angles interior angles do you understand children these four angles are interior angles because it is inside the two lines here okay yes it is lies between the two lines here the first condition is it should have a uh, different vertices we should have a different vertices let me take uh, these two points here okay i will erase this now the angle one okay and angle three okay children what is the vertex of angle one here p what is the vertex of angle 3 here q let me take uh, this as a q okay the first condition is satisfied it has a different vertices yes or no yes then or in the opposite side of a transversal line the l is a transversal line yes it is opposite opposite to transversal line second condition also satisfied or in the or lie or the angle two uh, two angles or lies between the two lines yes this angles lies between the two angles so therefore the angle one and angle three are called the alternate interior angles same like that you can take another another example also they are also called l and m and n okay these two l lines meets at point p and q okay let me take another example here angle two and angle 4 okay so what what is the vertex of this angle 2 it's a p okay what is the vertex of angle q angle 4 here q okay different vertices next is it in the same side of the transversal line no it is opposite of the transversal line is it outside or inside an alternate exterior angle angles will be uh, what is alternate exterior angle here and should have, it should have a different vertices and it, it should lie on the opposite side of a transversal line and it should above or below the two lines children so let us see this example okay there are two lines here the line uh, l falls on the other line p at, and q at point o n okay so let me assume this angle as a one okay two one two here the angle one angle one what is the vertex of the angle one here oh what is what is the vertex of uh, angle two here we can give any name any name here m okay what vertex of angle one is o what is the vertex of angle two here m okay it has a different vertices then or in the or on the opposite side of a transversal line yes they both are on the opposite side of the transversal line so is it uh, above or below the two lines yes uh, the angle one is above to the line p angle uh, two is below to the line q okay therefore it is a alternate exterior angle center. same like that we can give another example also this one and this two this two angle angle two and angle four okay the angle two and angle four or here also next is transversal of a parallel lines okay 
what is the transversal of parallel lines here now we should understand for uh, three cases okay first we should know what is the transversal line transversal and parallel lines okay we already learnt about the parallel lines here the lines which have the same distance in the uh, everywhere between the lines it is called a parallel lines what is the transversal line here okay if a line falls okay i take a two lines which is parallel okay the distance between this uh, lines are equal so it is called a parallel lines line m and n are called a parallel lines because it is a uh, same distance between these two lines okay if a uh, line falls on the two lines here at point p at q okay p at q therefore the line l is called a uh, transversal line okay now you understood what is a transversal of parallel lines here okay so it makes a uh, eight angles here angle one angle two and angle three angle four angle five angle 6 angle 7 angle 8 so totally 8 angles so we will see about the 8 angles here first the first point is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal line each pair of corresponding angles are equal in measures that's what we have learned just now then if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal line each pair of alternate interior angles are equal for example the line t cuts at point at different vertices on the line l and m and it makes a uh, eight angles here okay where this angle 7 and angle 8 are the corresponding angles angle 5 and 6 are the corresponding angles and angle 1 and angle 2 are the corresponding angles angle 3 and angle 4 are the corresponding angles because it uh, uh, satisfies the, the condition condition of corresponding angles okay Next, another one is if two parallel lines cut or cut by the transversal line, then each of the pair of interior angles are on the same side of the transversal line or supplementary. Okay, let us understand through an example. Okay, the L is a tra T is a transversal. It cuts on the M and N. Okay, there are uh, alternate pair of interior angles. Okay, what are the interior angles here? Here. That is angle and these angles are the interior angles because it lies on the and these two angles are supplementary if you add and see measure manually you can it continuous or conditions to be a parallel lines okay if any two lines needs to be a parallel line it should it should satisfy the uh, following conditions okay when a transversal cuts two line such that pairs of corresponding angles are equal if the pairs of corresponding angles are equal, then the lines have to be a parallel line children. This is the first condition. For example, the line 1, line L and M, okay, if the transversal cuts N, so the M line cuts the transversal line. So actually M is the transversal line, it cuts at the point uh, at this angle T and S, okay. Now therefore, the angles, which is actually right angle, you can see, is actually a right angle, okay. Since it has both are equal 90 degree and 90 degree, therefore, and it, it should form a parallel line here, where the M, N and L are the parallel lines, children. N and L are the parallel lines. Next one is when a transversal cuts two lines, such pairs of alternate angles are equal, then the lines have to be parallel line. Okay. For example, let me assume this as a line L, line M, and the line which is okay, which is M or N. The line N uh, cross at point, okay. A different point it makes a different angles here this angle these two angles or alternate interior angles alternate interior angles because it has a different vertices it is opposite to, to the transversal line here the, end, the line n is called the transversal line okay so the the alternate angles are equal here the angles are equal 
then the two lines are called the parallel lines if you like third one is when a transversal cuts two lines such that the pairs of interior angles the pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal line are supplementary if they are supplementary the lines have to be parallel line. okay you can see at the angle 1 the line m the transverse the line 1 uh, intersect at point different points on the line p and l and there are four angle four interior angles angle 1 and angle 2 and angle 3 an angle 4 but uh, same set of the transverse line this angle 1 and angle 2 are interior angles okay it's sum if its sum is equals to 180 degree 180 degree then the angle we have a assessment in the assessment the name of pair, pair of angles we need, we need to name the pair of angles here okay angle 5 and 6 are called the interior angles here interior angles next one is the angle 11 and uh, 12 are the supplementary angles it makes a uh, 180 degree we have a homework so we can in the homework find the value of the of the angle x and z where we need to find the value of x and z in the following and we should give a reason also okay there is a line l and m is parallel where t is the transversal line so we need to find the value of x okay just remember the uh, corresponding angles alternate angles and alternate interior angles exterior angles where they are equal in measure then find the z value also just see okay thank you for watching children let us let us See you in the next part.